Hey Riddle here, welcome back to my channel. I am going to attempt to do this video for you and show you how to make a seven protection ultimate skincare soap. Now, soap making or soap rebatching, I'll say, is really easy. I can't believe how easy it's been. It's something new, but as you know, if you've watched my other videos, I really like uh, learning the basics and then taking it to the next level. And as I've been warning and promising you, I'm going to start covering more metaphysical slash spiritual slash magical topics. Uh, they're going to be one foot in chemistry and one foot in spirituality. So there should be a, a good balance. So if you are a believer or a superstitious person, hopefully this will work for you. And if you are a person just looking for really healthy uh, science-based ingredients to use in and on your body, it should work for you also. So let me show you how easy this is and give you the principle behind my seven protection soap. Now the reason I'm calling this the seven protection soap is that there are seven sacred resins and I will put that link below and the seven sacred resins are have been used for thousands of years and you will recognize some of the ingredients from the Bible frankincense myrrh things like this let me show you so here's our different resins we have dragon's blood upon a neck scum copal I have black and white I have some beautiful honey amber benzoin frankincense myrrh and this is a, a white copal and pinion pine sap now this sap I actually gathered myself when you add the pine sap into this uh, melting process you want to use very little because pine sap, though it's very healing, incredible on the skin, uh, it can heal wounds, it's great for many different things, including protecting you psychically. This is a prize from the Native American culture. It also is very sticky and tacky, and I actually gathered this myself from some pinion pines. So it's really more having the element of it and the scent of it than putting too much in. So when I say add a small amount, I'd say about an eighth of a teaspoon per bar of soap. And per bar of soap, it doesn't matter if it's a small or a large, but just a little bit just to get the element should be sufficient. Now, next, you have to find a good source for your soap. Now, my favorite soap, because it's the best on the skin, I believe, is goat's milk soap. I found organic goat's milk, goat's mix milk soap on eBay for sale and obtained six pounds for $25, including delivery. And uh, this woman on her little farm, she produces, not only does she produce an amazing product, but she also sends you rebatching instructions. So she tells you how to make soap in the oven, in the microwave, on the stove, and really nice, super, super nice. Now, she is a bit of a, a religious fanatic, and it's kind of funny because she stamps and puts something from the Bible on every single page of her information, along with a very funny picture of a goat, but that's okay, we all got our thing. So, you're gonna take your soap you're going to get a kettle. You're going to put your stove on a, a low to medium flame. You're going to guesstimate how much soap you want to make. And you've got to figure out what you're going to put your soap in. Uh, you can use a bread pan if you're going to make a large amount. Or if you want to do little single serving soaps, you can use an actual soap dish as your mold. And all you're going to do is you're going to take this soap dish and you can line it with some cellophane, or yeah, some cellophane will work, just mold it in there. And then when you pour it in, once it's melted, it will take the shape, and then we put that in the refrigerator to set it up quickly. 
So all you're gonna do, you're gonna take your soap and you're gonna chip away at it so it's in thin pieces. As thin as you can get, it'll melt more consistently. We're gonna throw it into our kettle. Now again, just like making chocolate, it's almost identical to making chocolate. You're gonna keep your heat on low to medium and you're not gonna rush this. Now what you're gonna see right away is the soap because of the fat and other, and the glycerin is gonna to wanna to start sticking to your pan and how you're gonna get around it being too thick, cooking, melting inconsistently or sticking to our pan is you're gonna add just a tablespoon, a tablespoon or two of milk. You can use coconut milk, you can use regular milk, it really doesn't matter. I used this and it turned out really, really nice. So next, these are the seven sacred resins. And the reason I'm using the seven sacred, re sacred resins is not only do they have a lovely smell, but the idea is to create a soap that helps to clear, protect, and overall put like a psychic protection over me. A psychic protection and also clean off of me what I've picked up from people over, you know, during the day because I'm very empathic, I'm very psychic, very sensitive, and it has a tendency of exhausting me. So on eBay, I have found a good source for all of these resins. And all I do is I take one little chunk, thinking per bar of soap, one chunk of resin of each, and I'm gonna put it in my coffee grinder, and I'm gonna grind it into a fine powder all of them together, all six of these, and then my little glob of pine sap, okay? So this is melting away over here, and you're gonna wanna be prepared. You're gonna wanna have a flat wooden spoon and a spatula. The spatula is gonna be important at the end to get it all out of there. And once it is really melted super consistently, like a pudding, and there's no more chunks in it, and you've Got it really going really, really well. Again, don't go too high on your heat. It's just like melting chocolate. So you could probably use the double batch method using boiling water underneath it too. Would probably work really, really well if you're that sophisticated and have worked with chocolate before. But once we get it melted into a nice liquidy consistency, we're gonna pour our resin powder into it. We're gonna mix that in really well. And then here's a really nice trick. Per each bar of soap, so let's say this is a bar. You can see how I used it as the mold. Uh, I'm gonna use two caps of emu oil for this large one, or one cap for a small bar of soap. You can see it here. Emu oil uh, is amazing on the skin. You know, you can use a lot of non-animal sources for oil for your skin, but I don't think anything absorbs into uh, the human skin like animal fat. And if you're vegan or against these kind of things, of course you can use, there's a ton of other, plum oil is amazing, uh, flaxseed oil, just plain old olive oil. I have an Asian friend and she's almost 60 and her skin's gorgeous and all she does is rub olive oil on it. But I love emu oil. I just, for me, there's nothing like it. So you're gonna put your cap of emu oil into your melted soap base. And you don't wanna to put too much oil because then it's not gonna to stick together once we, we, you know, once we reconstitute our soap in its mold. So at this point, we have our emu oil in here. We've poured our seven resin powder for our protection and cleansing. And you have one more choice at this point. This is not going to create a heavy scent, which is really nice but some people like a really perfumey soap or a soap that's going to be more pronounced on the body. This is where you can add your essential oil if that's your thing. The only thing that I would suggest that I've learned is t there's two things. One, you wanna pick an oil that's not for uh, diffusing because that's gonna burn your skin. It has to be a pure oil, an essential oil that can be used on the skin, a food grade, preferably. The second thing, it takes a lot of oil to actually scent the soap. I thought I was being really generous, and even with patchouli that you know just a couple drops usually just will dominate the smell of any kind of perfume, the soap really neutralized it. So at your discretion, but be prepared that you might have to add a little more essential oil 
than expected to get a scent that really holds in the soap. So at this point, we've melted in all of our shards of goat's milk soap. We've added a little bit of milk to help make it a little more moist so it doesn't stick and burn to the bottom of our pan. We've added from our coffee grinder, our seven protective sacred resins. And we've added our emu oil or some type of oil to make it super moisturizing and our essential oils. And we've mixed this together super, super well. And then we're just gonna take our glop and you can use anything for a mold. You can use a bread pan, you can use little bowls. I used little bowls to make this shape here and it turned out really, really well. But again, don't forget to spray them with a little pan or put some sulfate in the bottom so you can get them out once they set up. We're gonna pour this into our mold. I'm pretending now it's gonna be filled up to as high as you want. And then we're gonna take this and you put it inside of the refrigerator and let it set up all the way, just like you would a fudge. One thing I have to tell you about this soap, not only is it fantastic and so gentle on the skin and completely just so organic, it's not gonna be real foamy though. People have this idea that soap has to have a lot of foam, but in actuality, that foam is created by a chemical called sodium lauryl sulfate which there's a lot of evidence out there is a carcinogen. It can cause cancer and isn't great for you. But trying to find shampoo and soaps that don't have it in the ingredients is really difficult. And, you know, it's kind of, you have to use more of it because it's not as foamy. You know, it doesn't seem like it's really spreading on the skin. This will foam up a little bit, but don't expect it to be like a commercial soap. So that being said, that's it. Um, it's going to leave your skin feeling really moisturized, almost a little bit tacky because of the fat content in the soap, but it's so gentle on the skin and so moist. And then you're going to have the benefits of the protection of these sacred ingredients. This is a really great gift or a really great idea for people in the healthcare industry who are uh, exposed to people who are sick daily for psychics and for people doing energy work and for people you know, who are consistently bombarded by energy or anyone who's just feeling like energetically cursed, energetically drained, like they really need some protection from external influences. So there you go. Beautiful soap, handmade, and uh, you can make, for $25, you can make quite a bit, I have to say. This is not, there was a lot more than this. This is not $25 worth. Uh, it probably went out to about here when it was done. And this is, gosh, it's super thick. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. I'd say you could probably conservatively make 12 or 13 large bars of soap for the $25 with this super high ingredients. And I don't know if you've ever seen the price of really well-made really well-made soap without these sacred ingredients, but a good bar of organic handmade soap can run you eight to $12 now or more. So that's it. I hope you're not upset that I'm not actually melting all this stuff on the stove. I only have one hand and it was just a little too difficult to do and it would just have been fumbling and silly. Uh, but if you really like the video, I can redo it when I have someone here to hold it the camera for me. Okay, that's it. I want you to be inspired today. Take control of your life. Make something. I love making things. If you enjoy my quick money-saving tips, how-tos, organic gardening, wild crafting, mushroom hunting, and slowly moving into bringing some magic into our lives, please subscribe. It helps. Bye. Take care.